In this video, I want to focus on the concept of struct in Julia programming language. Before we dive into details, it is beneficial to talk about the why behind using a struct. In Julia, a struct is used to define custom composite types which are essential for organizing and structuring data in your programs. Here are the key reasons to use a struct in Julia. Data organization, abstraction, clear intent. That's not all of the benefits, of course. There is more to it. Type safety, dispatch, immutability by default, efficient memory usage, extensibility, interoperability. I will address the practical ones in this video. First, let me define what a struct is. In Julia, a structure denoted by the keyword struct is a collection of one or more variables possibly of different types grouped together under a single name for convenient handling. There are many situations in which we want to process data about a certain entity or object, but the data consists of items of various types. For example, the data for a student, the student record, may consist of several fields such as name, address, telephone number, all of type string, number of courses taken, integer, fees payable of type floating point, names of courses of type string, grades obtained of type character, and so on. Consider the problem of storing a date in a program. A date consists of three parts, the day, the month, and the year. Each of these parts can be represented by an integer. For example, the date September 15, 2024 can be represented by the day 15, the month 9, and the year 2024. We say that a date consists of three fields, each of which is an integer. It consists of the keyword struct followed by some name we choose to give to the structure. Date in this example. We use the convention of starting a struct name with an uppercase letter. This is followed by the fields one per line followed by end keyword. If necessary, we could declare a type for any of the fields like this. These declarations could be written as follows if we so choose. We use a semicolon to separate consecutive fields. Once we have defined a struct, we can create variables of that type, like this. This declares the log underscore date variable to be a date variable with a given value. We refer to the fields of the log underscore date with log underscore date dot day, log date dot month, and log date dot year. A field is specified by the struct name, followed by a period followed by the field name. What we cannot do is change the value of a field. Suppose we try this. We will get the following message. Why? Because like a string and unless declared otherwise, a struct is immutable. Once assigned, we cannot change the value of an individual field. However, we can assign a new value to the entire struct like here. Log date has a new value. The old one has been replaced. In many applications, immutable structs like immutable strings will suffice. For those times when we may need to modify the fields of a struct, Julia lets us declare it as mutable, like this. If we wish, we can declare a type for any or all of the fields. Now we can change the value of individual fields, which we could not do with an immutable struct. Immutable structs are processed more efficiently than mutable ones. Make sure you really need a mutable struct before declaring to use one. To protect you, Julia's default is immutable. We can pass a struct as an argument to a function. Let's write one which prints a date. One question which arises is this. Can a function change the value of a struct argument passed to it with the change known in the calling function? The question arises only in the case of immutable struct since, by definition, we cannot change an immutable one. To answer, we define a mutable struct. Here, mDate indicates mutable date. As we see, the function has changed the value of its argument. This confirms that a struct argument is passed by reference. The called function has access to the original argument. If the argument is a mutable struct, the called function can change its value. Thanks for watching till the end of the video. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel to not lose future content on Julia programming language. As always, See you all later.